Pharmacology is the study of medications or chemical compounds which interact with various living systems, from tiny molecules to cells to tissues to whole organisms in order to produce a certain effect. Every day, more and more new medications are designed to fight diseases, from infections to cancer, heart failure, and depression. But the process of developing a new medication can take a lot of time and money, and it typically consists of three phases. First, there's the discovery phase, in which a candidate compound is picked out as a possible therapeutic agent for a specific disease. Then there's the preclinical phase, during which this compound is tested on cell cultures in animals, like mice and rats, mainly to see if it causes any serious harm. And finally, during the clinical phase, the compound is tested first on healthy human volunteers to make sure it's safe, and finally on individuals suffering from that disease to find out if it's indeed effective against this disease. If all of this goes well, then congratulations, we've got a new medication. And this medication will have at least three names. A chemical one, describing its chemical structure and used mostly in scientific studies, like N-acetyl-P-aminophenol, a generic name which is usually a shortened version of the chemical name and is mostly used by health professionals, such as paracetamol or acetaminophen, and one or more brand or trade names given by the pharmaceutical companies that make the medication, such as Panadol or Tylenol. Now, every medication contains a precise amount of the active ingredient, called the dose, which is often as little as 5 milligrams, and that's less than a grain of sand. Since that's too small to even handle, it's usually combined with inactive substances, like fillers, binders, and lubricants that serve to fill out the medication and make it more convenient to use. Together, they get manufactured as a chemical preparation, like a pill, solution, spray, or ointment. According to the form of the chemical preparation and the part of the body being treated, it can then be administered through various means or routes, like swallowed by the mouth, orally, inhaled into the lungs, injected into a vein, intravenously, into a muscle, intramuscularly, sprayed into the nose, nasally, or applied on the skin, cutaneously. All right, now once administered, the medication starts interacting with the body, this interaction can be broken down into pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Pharmacokinetics refers to the movement and modification of the medication inside the body. In other words, it's what the body does to this medication. So, once the medication gets administered, it first has to be absorbed into the circulation, then distributed to various tissues throughout the body, metabolized or broken down, and finally eliminated or excreted into the urine or feces. You can remember this as ADME, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. Pharmacodynamics, on the other hand, refers to what the medication does to the body. So, once again, after the administration of a medication, it binds to receptors or specialized proteins located on the surface or inside a cell. This gives rise to a signal cascade which ultimately results in some change in the cell's function, like boosting the production of a particular type of protein or slowing down DNA replication. An ideal medication would produce a single, beneficial, or therapeutic effect for a certain disease state. In reality, though, most medications produce several unwanted effects, called side effects, and these could be conditions like nausea or fatigue. Now, the way a medication interacts with the body, so both pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, varies widely from person to person. It depends on a range of factors, like a person's genetic profile, ethnicity, age, sex, and the health of their liver or kidneys. Medications can also interact with one another as well. For example, in pharmacokinetics, it might be the two medications are metabolized by the same enzymes, so they compete for the same enzyme sites. In pharmacodynamics, the two medications might both increase the blood pressure, producing a synergistic effect where the blood pressure goes up even higher than what you'd expect by simply adding the two medication effects together. Likewise, a medication might work to increase blood pressure by simply opposing the effect of another medication, thereby having an antagonistic effect. 
Now, we're moving toward an era of personalized pharmacology, which is where medical treatments are tailored to the characteristics of each individual. To do this, there are new fields like pharmacogenetics, which combines pharmacology with genomics, and uses genetic profiles to pair the right medication at the right dose to the right person. There's also pharmacoepidemiology, which takes into account differences in medication responses between populations. And, of course, pharmacoeconomics, which evaluates the costs and benefits of medications used in populations. Alright, as a quick recap. Each medication is developed in three phases. A discovery, preclinical, and clinical phase, and has three names. A chemical, generic, and brand name and it contains an active ingredient along with some inactive ones. Pharmacokinetics studies what the body does to a medication, and pharmacodynamics studies what a medication does to the body, including both beneficial effects and side effects. 